The political train wreck that is the Health Services Union is back to plague the Gillard government once more. An audit has slammed the former union boss, Michael Williamson, for misspending millions of dollars. The Prime Minister says it vindicates her move to place the union in administration. But that's now under threat, as Hayden Cooper reports. This is an attempt at damage control, an in-house video produced last year by HSU East and its beleaguered boss. Michael, there's been some media articles uh, suggesting that the union is in crisis. That's far from the truth. Oh, it's, it's a long way off reality, Catherine. The practical situation is that uh, the union is in, is in a fine position. You know, uh, When you look at that in the last week our membership has increased by over about 150 members, um, that's not reflective of a union in crisis. It's moving forward um, and uh, we're in good shape. That was then, but now in 100 pages, Michael Williamson's record in charge of this union has been laid bare and the news travelled fast to the very top. I, I've, seen, I've seen those reports. It's clear that there have been real problems at the Health Services Union and that's distressing, I think, to everyone who cares about working people getting decent representation from their trade union. On behalf of the Gillard government, we want to say that uh, the Tembi report demonstrates the deplorable state of affairs which has occurred in one part of the Health Services Union. Ian Tembi's report takes a close look at spending at the union during the Williamson reign. It follows the money. Michael Williamson's union salary was almost $400,000. $4.6 million of union funds went to a company he part owns, United Edge. $3.4 million went to Marchut Architects, who also worked on Mr Williamson's personal home. $3 million went to a printing firm, which had allegedly given a credit card to the union boss. And almost $400,000 was paid to Mr Williamson's wife for archiving union documents. Ian Temby finds that many of the contracts didn't even go to tender. For HSU officials still around, it's galling. There is not another union in this country that will be paying people even close to that. Uh, in fact, nowhere near that. And uh, there's just no justification whatsoever uh, for union officials being paid those sorts of sums of money. And I've described it in the past as being obscene and obscene as what it is. And so the backdrop was set for the latest chapter of the union struggle in the courts and today's effort by Cathy Jackson to overturn the appointment of an administrator. That move put her and all other elected union officials out of a job. A hearing will be brought on in coming weeks. What I'm appealing is there's a whole range of people that have done the right thing. Myself, Marco Bellano, Councillor Ted Hinch from New South Wales and all the Victorian councillors at every point try to sort this out and um, solve the problems within the HSU and we were stopped at every step of the way by Michael Williamson and his cronies. In the meantime, the administrator is going about his duties at HSU East headquarters, which begs the question, just what will he do with the Tembi report? My guess is that he will do three things. Um, one is that he will use it to uh, guide him in strengthening the governance procedures within that branch to put in place mechanisms to prevent this from happening again in the future. Um, secondly, he has the, uh, the option of um, actually pursuing recovery of some of the funds if they have deemed to be misappropriated. In fact, he has an obligation under the court order to do that. Uh, and my guess is that he'd be looking at that um, very carefully. And uh, uh, the third option that he's got, um, if he hasn't already done it, is that is to refer the report to the New South Wales Police so that it can be investigated as part of the uh, criminal investigation that they have underway at the moment. From Concord, the... Within the National Union, the knives are well and truly so out for the former HSU East boss. One, the, next the, boss. the next step may be new efforts to remove him from the national role he still technically owns, HSU President.
Well, he still holds a position, and no, he shouldn't. Look, essentially, under the rules, he can be charged with gross misconduct and removed from office. Up until now, all there's been is accusations. There's been no uh, objective finding that has pointed to that. Now that we do have the final 10B report, then it may well be that um, there is uh, evidence in that that would uh, warrant him being removed from that position as national president. The thousands of members of this union will soon have their say on all of this when fresh elections are held. But even then, warring factions blame each other for seeking to cling to power. And there's one move of note. Cathy Jackson has left Melbourne behind and now calls New South Wales home, the state with the largest membership. There's no doubt that that is what she's trying to do, is gain control of those three branches. And because of the, <clears throat> the sheer size of those three branches, you gain control of those, then you also gain control of the national union and therefore the whole of the organisation. Why have you moved to New South Wales? I've moved to New South Wales because my partner's originally from Sydney and um, our plan was always to move back here so he could be closer to his children. Does it have anything to do with the elections? No. Nothing at all? Isn't it about shoring up your power base in this state? No, no. I could, I could have stayed in Victoria and had a power base there. But your critics no doubt would say that this is about Cathy Jackson finally moving to take control of the new HSU. Well, it's nonsense. It's not about that. Hayden Cooper asking the questions there.